I built a crokinole board and I'm going to show you how I did it in this video. I've never even played crokinole, but I do love board games and I have a fondness and admiration for a lot of things that originated in Canada. I mean Canada. Just to name a few. So when I saw these crokinole boards online, I knew I wanted to try this out. And then when I saw how much everyone was charging for them, I knew I wanted to try to build it myself. I found this amazing stick of bacon paduke while picking up materials for another project and instantly knew that's what I wanted to build the board out of. And this beautiful stripe had to be the centerpiece for it. So I made the appropriate cuts and glued it up overnight. With the clamps removed, I used a compass to get the measurements correct and draw the circle that would become the outside edge of the board. Then I moved over to the bandsaw to rough cut the outside of the circle. I was careful not to cut too close because I'd rather clean it up with the sander than accidentally cut it out of round. Once the rough cut was finished, I used the belt sander to even everything out and get right up to the edge of my line. And since the circle was wider than my drum sander, I had to alternate each side and dial down the height every two passes to get it all flat and clean. But the initial results were totally worth it. It looked amazing and I was already looking forward to seeing that color pop when the finish gets applied. Before I take it over to the laser, I use the hand sander to get the surface and edges from 80 to 120 and then 220 grit. I used a pencil to mark the surface in between each grit to ensure I got the whole area as completely and evenly as possible. Once in the laser, I quickly realized that the board was just slightly too large to the constraints of the machine. This meant I couldn't actually do a full-size 26-inch tournament board, so I had to adjust on the fly to the smaller 24-inch size. I ran some tests before I got started to ensure I had the settings just right and to make sure I wasn't going to ruin all my hard work. It didn't turn out as good as I'd hoped, but still totally usable for my first attempt. I sanded the top back down to 220 grit and marked the new edges from the last minute reduction in size. Then I popped back over to the bandsaw for another pass around. This time, to clean up the edges, I used the oscillating belt sander because it has a much larger table that helped to keep the board more flat and I could wedge it up against the guard for more control as I worked around the edge. At this point, I was really itching to at least get the main board usable, so I started applying finish, and I ended up getting about six coats on there over the next couple days. Those extra few days gave me time to figure out what I was going to do about the bumpers and discs, so I got all that ordered and in route. The last order of business before installing the bumpers was to cut the center hole. I didn't trust myself to do this with a drill bit, so I decided to use my old CNC machine. I ran into the same issue here where the board is too big for the machine, but I wedged it in there and held it in place with my leg long enough for it to work its magic. I applied a bit of finish into the newly drilled hole using a paintbrush, then pre-drilled all the holes for the bumpers. Before installing the bumpers, I applied a few coats of Express Wax with a microfiber cloth which I had seen recommended in the forums for slicking these boards up, ready to play. We got a fast waxed crokinole board now. I bought these pegs from Brown Castle Games and they really kind of outdid themselves. Like these look great. It came with a protective circle uh, so that you don't as one does, accidentally mar up your whole board when the screwdriver inevitably slips or drill slips. Um, so great job guys, thank you for that. I installed the bumpers per the instructions and then wiped down the board one last time before testing. Oh, that's cool as crap. Holy moly, it's so fast, oh my gosh. At this point, I was so excited to learn how the game works and play it. I thought, why do I even need to build this ditch around it? So I took it inside and set it up for after dinner game night. After watching a few how-to videos, we played the game for a couple hours. And as it turns out, there's a very good reason to have that ditch. These little pucks go flying so fast in all directions. But overall, it is such a fun game.
and I can already tell it's going to become a favorite around the house. But first, let's build a ditch. Now that we've established the need for the ditch around the crokinole board, I've cut from some plywood this octagon and I'm gonna take the rest of the bacon paduke and make a nice little lip around uh, to keep those pucks from flying everywhere. So I cut about 14 inches off of the bacon paduke, which would leave me enough room to cut each piece as I went, then ran it through the table saw to get it to the right height. Okay, I've run the first few pieces through over there at 22 and a half degrees, which is splitting the 45. I got lazy the first time through and I was gonna do walnut originally, and for some reason in my head, I thought like, well, since this is 45, if I just cut every other board at 45, I can leave the ones on the flat edges flat and they'll butt right up. That was incorrect. I don't know why I thought that. Uh, it seemed to make sense to me at the time, but it then ended up jutting out and ruined a few pieces of walnut. Well, I say ruined, I'll find something to do with them in six or seven years from now. So now I'm gonna mock these up and because there's slight variations all the way around this board, I'm gonna physically mark each one so that it's exactly cut for that side and then attach it as I go so that I can really dial it in and make sure it's nice and nice and tidy. So this part of the build is pretty straightforward and normally I just speed this up to get back to the action. But something unusual happened here that I thought was really interesting. Well, I'll be. Not a single one of those went straight. Every one of those curved straight down. Following the grain of the wood, that is interesting. I did this experiment twice just to verify that it was happening. And both times, the nails went straight in, following the grain, and straight down exactly. Which was super cool but meant I needed to figure out another way to attach this base. I didn't think glue would be enough and wasn't confident I could get everything clamped in time so it wasn't a giant crooked mess anyway. So I decided on pocket holes. 16 pocket holes and 16 screws later, it was kind of still a giant crooked mess, but nothing the sander couldn't fix. I sanded this from 80 to 120 and finally 220 grit and gave all the edges a light brushing to take the sharp corners off. Then I applied the first of what ended up being about six coats of lacquer. And I think it turned out great. This was a super fun project and while impractical, was just another chance for me to exercise the I can do this mentality. If you like this kind of content and wanna see more, please click that like and subscribe button and check out the links in the description for materials and social media links. Thanks so much for watching.